Hello everyone, it's Maxine. <laughs> I always think that I'm going to say my intro a little cooler, but I always end up just saying it exactly the same. And <laughs> like I said in my last post, I just enjoy being who I am and I don't even want to, I'm not going to be putting any effort into sounding anything other than myself and or editing a whole bunch when I stutter, stammer, whatever. I never had the privilege of seeing a speech therapist as a child. So on top of all my other problems and diagnoses and undiagnosed dyslexia, I don't know what exactly my speech impediments are. <laughs> like, I don't think I have a full blown lisp, maybe, but I have that SSS problem. I wish, I wish I didn't have that. <sighs> but anyway, um, <laughs> today I wanted to do, uh, I watched this interesting video on YouTube yesterday called Jubilee Middle Ground, and it was about, um, autistic versus neurotypical points of view. The reason it stood out right away is because I saw Abby from Love on the Spectrum and her mom Christine on the like thumbnail and I was like, oh, I have to check this out. And I'm glad I did. It was a really nice conversation where both parties were like respectful and understanding of seeing everyone's side and it was just really nice because some of the other topics that they've had are very heated and yeah, but... Um, I'm getting, <laughs> I'm sitting at the most beautiful points out in Victoria. I don't even know what this lookout point is called, but if you could just see what I'm seeing right now, I guess I'll, uh, show you a clip of what I'm seeing in the beginning of the video or the end, but the, uh, iPhone camera quality will never do it justice. It's like stunning views of mountains and the sea and boats and the clouds and it just goes on and on and I'm on I'm in Canada on the Victoria side of things but right across the water is Washington so it's pretty interesting we always get like cruise ships and stuff but anyway so I want to try to make this a shorter video for once because <laughs> Like, the whole doing my makeup and then posting turns out to be, like, 40 minutes to an hour long. Like, that's kind of asking a lot of people. I mean, no one has to, is, has to, but they might be interested in what I have to say, but it takes quite a long time. <laughs> like, the video I made about, um, the five pros and five cons to working for as a delivery driver. If I had been a bit more organized with that, then it wouldn't have been like a 40 minute video <laughs> but maybe I'll make a short ver version someday because <laughs> I think you know it is good for people to know especially for women because not a lot of women um do delivery driving I mean there are a lot but just not as many like we're probably like five to ten percent of the <laughs> delivery drivers like versus men. Anyway, back to this. <laughs> I need a sip of like cotton mouth. <laughs> oh, I hope my camera doesn't fall. <laughs> I have it resting on my rear view mirror. <gasps> Speaking of rear view mirror, I saw that speech from Jelly Roll and it was just so inspiring and awesome that he's talking about getting an award at the age of 39 and just that it's not too late for anybody and <sighs> awesome I'm not even really like a country music fan but I just saw that clip anyway ah back to this like this so I'm gonna like maybe I'll reword these questions because I don't want to get myself in trouble but I wanted to as long as I credit where I'm getting the questions from then I'm sure it's not going to be a problem like I I'm not um, they're general questions that anyone can ask them. Um, is changing the order and changing the exact question important to not get like in trouble with, 
I don't think anyone's gonna be coming for me. <laughs> First of all, I don't have a huge audience and I, um, I'm sure they have more important things to deal with than attacking a disabled person, but okay, anyway. Um, well, the first question, I don't think it was included in the, uh, like it was a question in the video's title, but it wasn't a question that I don't think any of them answered unless I'm just forgetting, but can you tell if someone has autism? Um, definitely, like for me, almost every single one of these questions, it's like I can see both sides, both points of view. So. I don't know if there's going to be anything in here I'm answering exactly yes or no. That's always been the way that I think, like, some things are very black and white, but a lot of things I'm able to see both both points of view, even if I don't agree with one side. But, um, can you tell if someone has autism? I definitely couldn't when I was younger, because I had no idea what autism even was. Like, I remember when I was, like, in my early teens the information just simply wasn't there and I only first started hearing about it when I was like um since I'm like one of the kids that was bullied a lot it wasn't really easy for me to like pick up on everyone else like of course there were kids who had behavioral issues but um I never linked that to being autism. I always just thought, oh, they're a bad kid because I was just a kid myself. I wasn't thinking, oh, I wonder what where they're coming from, like their family background and whatnot, or possibly they're just autistic and overstimulated or whatever the case may be. But with age, I feel like I've definitely, now that I like really know all the different areas that it can affect someone's life, like whether it be in relationships to speech patterns to eye contact and all that stuff. Um, I just, I'm starting to reflect a lot of my life and I'm like, wow, I really attracted a lot of um, neurodivergent friends growing up because they had a lot more patience and understanding like, and we, tended to not care about being cool we were interested in subjects that were definitely not cool or nerdy or whatever so we were just like true to ourselves and <laughs> like the kids who tended to be picked on it's like those were my people <laughs> but then on the other hand I don't know like I was a social butterfly even though I definitely had a lot of anxiety and stuff in situations like if I had to do like a class presentation or something like that stuff really was hard for me but I was always like a social butterfly like I tried to become friends with everybody and not everyone wanted to be my friend but I always made an effort to just be kind to everyone and does that mean I was always perfect never said a bad word about anyone never maybe even bullied myself in some ways that I didn't realize at the time no of course I have made many mistakes especially as a child but um I was definitely some autistic people not every autistic person is extremely reserved it seems like every phase from like infant to toddler to child to preteen to teen to adult young adult to now it's like every phase has been gradually better in terms of my ability to, to communicate even though of course I stutter and all that stuff but just in terms of my vocabulary and everything like that or like you know people do gravitate towards me at times like when I used to take the bus and before I had a vehicle like I could make small talk with strangers and and it really just all depended how I was feeling. Um, see, I want to make this video short. We're 10 minutes in and I haven't even <laughs> answered the first question. Well, it's just going to be a long one. And, you know, if people are nice enough to spend time to listen to me rant and talk, well, you can increase the speed or you can come back to it. You can watch a little and then come back if you're interested in what I have to say. 
<laughs> anyway, so can I tell if someone has autism? Not 100%, of course. The other side of that is you'll never really know unless someone has shared their whole life experience with you because even adults who have outgrown a lot of their signs or the issues that they had when they were younger that they struggled with, um, especially even for myself, like when I was a child, I was extremely shy and very emotional and very to myself and isolated and not a lot of kids wanted to play with me when I was really young to becoming like a, like I really focused on socializing when I was in like high or middle school to high school. I definitely focused on friendships versus education. I didn't prior prioritize education whatsoever and I kind of wish I had but um when things were so tumultuous <laughs> however you say that. when things were so horrible at home all I wanted to do was have friends where I had a place to go after school and not go home so I think that's why but um <laughs> but yeah so you cannot always tell I can tell some of the time if I get to know a person but I can't just look at someone and say, oh, I think they do. Maybe some people can, but not me. Um, the next was, I find the word disabled offensive. I personally don't because I am disabled, um, because not only am I autistic, I feel if I had, if I was just autistic growing up, and if we took abuse out of the equation, I think I'd be a lot more happy, functional, high self-esteem, just an all around way better person than I am today. But due to my um, childhood abuse and having CPTSD, depression, anxiety, and all that stuff, I, it is really hard for me. Um, like I only just started to discover like what I'm really meant to do and what's a good career for me long term. I, having my home daycare was actually my number one and I would have continued on with that but I had to get myself out of that situation because I was sharing a home with my mom and I just had way too much resentment from my childhood to live with her and it just didn't feel good over time and those were like the best years of my life but also really hard when I went from living on my own from 18 19 to my late 20s so for me personally I don't find disabled offensive like disabled like some of the people in the uh, video said the R word is definitely a lot worse or just calling people stupid or whatever like we're not stupid we just have our own interests and we don't we lack maybe in some areas like communication and building relationships or ha some people take advantage of us but we're not if you really get to know us you'll see that some of us a lot of us have like a wealth of information or special talents and just like anybody and we're just all different and we all neurotypical people tend to fall in line with typical society where all that stuff is very important to them about like status or money or goals of where you are in life and whatnot and then to neuro divergent people like it might be a little less important sometimes so not with everybody of course but some and so no I don't find the word disabled offensive because some of us just really are disabled and is every single autistic person disabled I mean that's a question to be asked because there are autistic people who live alone and they are employed for years and they don't have some of the problems that some of us face are they disabled they may struggle in a lot of areas of their life relationships or they're still technically disabled I suppose because autism is a disability but um if you don't identify as a disabled person then that's entirely up to you 
so next is I have trouble making friends. So like I was saying when I was younger, I was like a social butterfly and I tried to, I was like friends group with everybody and I feel like I knew almost every person's name and because I had friendships where some friend groups were some of those were the cool kids like the athletes the kids going to university and stuff and they kind of stuck with their group but I was a person not saying like they were mean or they weren't didn't have friends outside of the group but for the most part they stuck to their group and me I was always kind of like bouncing from all the groups but with that, I always, like, within the groups, I only had, like, really one really close friend at a time. And I had a hard time. Every time there was, like, a big group, I felt like I just wasn't able to... It was kind of just, like, being on the outside. Like, some people try to include me, but a lot of the time, I feel like I just couldn't jump in the way people were talking. And, like, it just flowed. And the way that I, it's, like, I just couldn't get a word out sometimes. <laughs> Like whether people didn't want to hear what I had to say or I don't know but I definitely was like ostracized and left out a lot of the time but um, what I was trying to say is like within those groups I always tended to have like one friend and sometimes even in a group of three if we were doing something those people would kind of be like clicked and in sync with their thinking and what they wanted to talk about and then I had a lot harder of a time so I was always kind of like a a serial friendship kind of person where I just had my like one best friend and that was hard a lot when I was in my younger years in elementary school and middle school because it's like you know I wanted to go to my friend's house or I was invited to their place like quite often or my friends would ask and it's like their parents didn't ask for another child like you know to take care of so whether I had fallouts with my friends like fights that anybody has and kind of we just cut cords or sometimes I do wonder if some of those parents that weren't so nice to me if they kind of like influenced their child's decision like Saying, oh don't hang out with them they're stupid or who knows or comes from a different background they could tell that like what's going on in my house wasn't normal <laughs> but uh so yes and no because as well um I do actually have a lot of problems today with making friends and it's it's like I can make friends with almost everybody but I think that I've just dealt with so many toxic relationships in my life that I'm at the point where I am not making the effort at all. Like I've just been hurt too many times and the last two friendships I did make, was there anything like really, really wrong with it? Did we have any major fights or blowouts? No, everything. But there, something fell off and maybe the off part is the comfort of it not being like an extremely volatile dramatic type of relationship maybe that's all I'm really used to or something I don't know but I think it was more than that it was just something I was sensing like just something wasn't right if you're in any kind of relationship and you get that feeling you don't have feel like you have to stay in that relationship friendship whatever <laughs> but <laughs> well I'm out of breath because I'm talking so much and then I'm out of breath because I've been um, gradually just getting less and less active. I definitely need to get back out there, like walking the dogs more. And when I'm not working, it's just easy for me to be lazy. And and like I said, I had breathing issues from my dad being a chain smoker growing up. So um, I've always just been like kind of a, it's really strange, like I seem so out of breath sometimes, but I'm also a very shallow breather too at times. So I don't know what that means or whatever, but. Okay, next question. Oh. Talk about always attracting. Oh, <laughs> I was just saying how, when I think back, like I think back to some, my first two roommates and 
some of the friends like real friends and connections I've made in my life and even my first like real relationship like I'm 99.9% .9 confident to say that we were all neurodivergent <laughs> I mean, of course we can, every single one of us, neurotypical or not, could have bouts of depression or anxiety at times or anything, but I, um, the friends that I have had in relationships, it's like very clear signs of being neurodivergent and maybe autistic themselves. So I just find that kind of interesting. But it does make sense because, you know, the neurotypical people who are the judgy neurotypical people don't want to include the people who are different in terms of their way of thinking and if they're not cool or like because I was overweight too, that's another factor. I mean, of course, because online bullying and in person, that's, is a factor. So, um... I have looked down on someone who is autistic. Uh, yes, I'm not proud of it, but when I was a lot younger, I just really didn't understand. I thought like, I thought that those kids were making a conscious decision to behave how they were behaving, but today I would know better not to judge because I know sometimes it's just completely out of the, their control, like with impulses or um, being overstimulated and whatnot so of course when I was younger and unfortunately I did hang out with people at times in my life who were like extremely judgmental and you know it used to like make me laugh like whether they're making fun of me or other people it was like maybe like I wish I had ended those relationships a lot sooner but um I hung on to them for some reason and I think the reason is when you're going through, you don't even have your parents' support and they're abusive in their ways, then you're kind of attracting that sort of love and attention and you think that's normal. Like, so, yeah, I think that the only guy who answered yes to this was the only person who was truthful because I think every single one of us out there has judged whether we are, are or not. But would have would you today? Um, I think like sometimes we automatically judge things before we even put the pieces together. But I'm definitely I'd definitely be more vocal about standing up for people today than I was. I've always kind of been that person, but knowing what I know now, I would be even more so. But one thing I see, if I see people exploiting someone having a mental health crisis or possibly autistic online, like in a TikTok, I'll quickly say, comment, like, stop exploiting mentally ill people. So, like, that's one thing that's, like, really not okay. I guess we're not making such bad time considering <laughs> I usually go for an hour. But the next question, um... Accommodations should be made for autistic people to be included in society. Um, I think so. Like, if that's what the autistic person wants to do, there should be ways. But accommodations. Um. I think that there have been accommodations making. I think more and more stores are starting to have days where, I don't know if this happens here and where I'm from, but days where they dim the lights and turn the music off and things like that, where it might be a little less busy. And I think there's maybe more accommodations in schools. I can't say for sure because I have seen like a teacher saying that they're kind of taking on too many roles right now where there isn't that support and of course you know a lot of um, autistic people on the streets who are addicted and homeless their needs aren't being met and there's no place for them to go because 
I don't know, our governments just put their hands in the air and saying, nope, they're not our responsibility. Well, some of those people don't have families or anywhere to go. <sighs> but um, I definitely think accommodations should be made. I just can't, I'm trying to think of what the other hand would be where they shouldn't be made. And I just can't really think of any, there's always, there always should be a way like, I heard that even there's accommodations for autistic kids at certain like like in the uh, video I watched there's it was like a Broadway or something like that and they had a event where it was like for autistic people so things like that are really good to, and awesome to hear autistic people are not actually oh autistic people are not are, um, accurately re represented in media. Um, that's hard for me to say because I don't watch a lot of things. I don't watch a lot of series. I don't watch a lot of new movies. Like what I tend to do is watch a lot of things I've seen a hundred times where I really like reality shows. I know that's kind of silly, but I think that's where a lot of my um, ability to like read people a little better than some autistics might because um I've been so into those shows for a long time so I can kind of see things others might not see but when it comes to like movies and shows and series and stuff I'm definitely out of the loop on that but from what I've gathered some people feel that there is and some people feel that there isn't and then some people think that like uh they wish that at least if you're going to be a neurotypical person in a, or neurodivergent person in a movie or show you should at least yourself be and it might be a more accurate representation but I don't know how I quite feel about that like it's acting for a reason but it would be nice if more neuro neurodivergent people were given those opportunities Anyway, um, so yeah, I can't, I don't have a full opinion on that. That's just kind of what I've heard, so. And, um, autis it's better for autistic people to, sorry, my writing was messy. <laughs> I wrote this myself and it's like, I can't even read my own writing. It's not that bad, but it's just... <laughs> It's better for autistic people to, oh, it's better for autistic people to date, date within the community. I think, um, this might be a little controversial, but depending where you fall on the spectrum, like if there's three levels, as they say, like high functioning kind of middle and then low functioning, very dependent like those people are still deserving of love but should they be dating somebody who is full-bodied mind like neurotypical I don't know because to me there's something feels a little bit wrong with that where it's like it feels like taking advantage of a vulnerable person as long as there's like no ill intention like or fetishization or something like that to that effect like that's where my mind goes like um I know people say not to infantilize I don't know how to say that word but people don't like that people are treating autistic people like children or babies or people are criticizing love on the spectrum and saying the music makes them sound makes them seem like children and stuff like I don't agree with that I really love the show I love the representation of everybody there and the music like that is the least of our concerns like just because it might sound childlike to you or whatever the case may be like what do you want them to play like death metal or some slipknot or something I like like it has to <laughs> it has to attract and it has to be kind of like just for everybody sort of. so not everyone likes that and 
I mean, if it was a show for love on the spectrum for like really high functioning people, well then would it be much of a show? Like you kind of probably deal with most of the same things that everybody does in relationships. And that's not what we're, what the show is really supposed to be about. It's supposed to kind of be seeing the challenges and the highs and lows because there is a lot of good too. But I don't think that ha like, cause there's been a lot of reality dating shows and I'm sure that tons of those contestants don't even realize that they're on the spectrum. So is it much of a, would it be much of a show if it was like more representation of high functioning people? I don't think so. I think I really like exactly how it is like where some people need a caregiver and some people are driving and have a job or like they said in the episode that I watched or the video I watched on YouTube about this yesterday like some people traveling alone and whatnot that doesn't make you any less autistic I had a little bit of a problem with some of the comments like that like I don't know if she meant to but I, I don't like all the hate going towards Christine, but it really did kind of hurt my own feelings in a way. Like, it's not just some fat. I did write something about that. It's like a lot of us were misdiagnosed because of the information not being there. But more so than that, like for me, I had two parents who were not taking care of their own needs, who were possibly autistic themselves with no awareness to that, who were judging and... I hope that audio is working for this. Oh my god. It is working. Anyway, I will just quickly say I find it a little... Like, just because you're higher functioning doesn't make it asp Asperger's. They changed the, um, the name of all that to autism for a reason. And there's... It's a spectrum. So there's high functioning, middle, and low functioning. Just because you're, and if you're, you're looking at somebody who's saying, oh, I have a job and I've been in relationships and blah, 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 but I still stim and I'm autistic. That's not neurodivergent, that's autistic still. And you didn't see their struggles as a childhood to now. And maybe they did go through therapy or maybe they didn't. Maybe they weren't offered that. So I just think maybe she's taking it very personally because she's had to personally work so hard with um, her child being more, like having more needs. I can understand that in a way, but it's just not healthy or right to decide. Like, I think the medical, like healthcare, psychology, psychiatrists, like, as more and more information comes, like, trust in their opinion of what autis autism is. I don't think they're just giving people a diagnosis as a cash grab. Like, in my other videos, I explained more about what makes me specifically autistic. But I have tons of stims. Ton I had way more sensory needs as a child that were just absolutely not going to be met. Oh, so that's one thing I was going to say. I was going to say that because my needs were not met and I was always combated and always like belittled and like, um, the only little teensy tiny, teeny tiny positive to that is that I had to adapt like for survival. So there's a lot of trauma with that, but the only positive to take away from that is it not having that diagnosis and that help at an early age just kind of like forced me out into the world to do things that I just had to do to survive like and when I got into serving like I shouldn't have got into serving that was really hard for me and really bad for me but having like daily having tips every day and then your hourly wage on top of that was really awesome for me so I stuck with that for way too long because of the money side of things and I found found it fun too and I liked being active and being on my feet and meeting new people but a lot of bullying went on in those years
before I knew myself. And uh, you should see, like, I'm wringing my hands. Like, that's kind of one of, like, this stems that I have when I get really anxious. Because when I reflect on the past, there's a lot of beauty and there's a lot of pain and suffering. And it does bother me a lot when people are saying, like, getting diagnosed as a fad and this and that. Like, regardless of all those people who... <laughs> like... It's not dangerous for people to be getting an autistic diagnosis. It's giving people a sense of purpose and belonging. And a lot of people do are autistic. And a lot of people can't even get the diagnosis because they can't afford like a $2,000 diagnosis. I couldn't at the time. And thankfully, I had help to get my diagnosis because it was so important to me because I just felt like... I finally, I need to know and I need to be validated and I need to have long-term protection because with my diagnosis comes disability. So I choose to work as a disabled person, but if something goes wrong, like sometimes I'm regressing in my skills depending what's going on in my life. If someday I just like literally can't work mentally and physically because I have a physical diagnosis as well, at least I have my ticket that says... <laughs> hey, please don't make me fight the medical field to prove to you like it's been, it's done and it's signed and sealed and it's like, thank God for that at least. And, you know, get, surviving on $1,500 a month is not easy. And I've paid into mine too. And some people can't pay into theirs. They don't deserve to be bullied or made to feel you think they would choose that life for themselves? Everyone, almost everyone wants to be working in relationships, like getting your house, getting married, all those milestones, getting your first car. Some aut autistic people just simply can't. Some disabled people just simply can't. Are there people taking advantage of it? I'm sure there are, but they might actually have problems too that they don't even realize. Cause like, why would anyone in their right mind just but I shouldn't say it like that. Not Ray Mind, but you know what I mean. Like, um, there are many forms of disabilities and things come with addiction and whatnot too. So we just need to be a little kinder. Like when you're saying, oh, my tax dollars. <sighs> it can happen to you. It can happen to your child. It can happen to your grandchild at any given point. So just because that person's closer to you, then it's okay. But if it's someone else in the world or somebody ends up on the streets because they're not getting that that support from a social worker or something, or they just simply can't take care of themselves and there's nowhere for them to go. It's a very, um, I've gone on a tangent when it was supposed to be about these questions, but those are important conversations to be had. But, um, so back to dating in the community, that was the question. I think that high functioning middle, if you think that being with someone neurotypical is okay, if you feel safe with that person, you feel loved and heard, then of course you have a right to decide. And even if you're low functioning, if, if that person's being good to you, they're not abusive, they're not... Like, sometimes you won't know if you're being taken advantage of if you get to a certain point. And I do worry about some of the people, and even on the show, like, others taking advantage of them just for fame. A little bit of uh, some social media. <laughs> but I hope I'm wrong about that. But um, Anyway. So this is why I say I can say yes and no to pretty much every single question because it really just all depends. And whoa, is that a whale? You know, there's lots of um, there's always like logs and driftwood and stuff, but sometimes there are whales that come back and forth here all the time, and. This looks like if it's a log, well, it has a point on it, like a dorsal fin. But it's just so far away, I can't tell. 
I love whales. <laughs> it's just so cool. It's like they're out there. <laughs> okay, next. The last question. Autism can be a strength. Well, it really depends. <laughs> See, <laughs> nothing is yes. I used to be very yes or no. And then I think because I was so yes and no, this is what I was thinking the other day, because I used to be so yes and no when I was younger and people like I had very strong views and not filtered and whatever. And people didn't like that about me. But because I was always being attacked for my beliefs, I kind of just started to try to see the other point of view all the time. So now it's like, <laughs> almost with every single question out there, my brain is always thinking of both sides, which I guess is a good thing when it comes to acceptance of others' opinions and beliefs. But it, I guess, does that make it confusing about knowing yourself very well? <laughs> I don't know. But um, I don't think there's anything wrong. Like these questions specifically, autism, it is, it's because of the spectrum of things and and being diagnosed late in life and for all I know I wasn't diagnosed late in life and my parents just forgot or something because when I was like really young in school I was struggling like to the point that they thought I was like extremely special needs but as time went on and my vocabulary and confidence grew I was in classes with people doing um like some of the more advanced classes in high school. Should I have been doing them some of the time? No, because I was prioritizing my relationships and friendships at high school. I was also working at a young age. I definitely didn't prioritize my education, but somehow I was allowed to get put in those classes. So <laughs> I don't know what that says about me. I have taken IQ tests in my life and I was like about one... 11 1 15 but my um my uh abilities with math and being undiagnosed with um <sighs> dyslexia like I went into this in another video but just to quickly mention that it's like I literally write words with the letters if I'm going too fast I'm constantly writing it wrong or backwards and when I was a cashier sometimes I'd say the numbers completely backwards and it's like hmm no wonder I was struggling so much and like taking tests and stuff or with math my brain is like literally putting it backwards so that's a clear indication of dyslexia and whatnot but so when I take those IQ tests it's not entirely an accurate representation because some of those questions are part of my disability so when I had to take the IQ test to get my autistic diagnosis and everything my she says my IQ is a lot lower than I'm like okay I was so so offended but I'm like they should ask questions <laughs> they should ask questions like without the math component and plus answering questions like verbally to someone and taking a IQ test personally myself within a time frame completely written I think the answers would be a lot different but like her asking me like um like a math question and having to do that entirely in my head and not have time like there's anxiety with that too so she did try to make some sort of note saying but you know she this and that and the other thing but I I was like I mean whatever it is what it is but I just don't feel personally that my IQ is that low I that shouldn't even be something I should be saying and laughing about it's just that um I just don't think that people with extremely low IQ have the comprehension the um the insight the ability to see both sides some of the time the storytelling the knowledge that I have some people who are considered low IQ are still savants and geniuses in other ways too sometimes they have extreme special talents and gifts that make them like a genius but do they know everything about the world that maybe a more average IQ person has 
like I don't know IQ tests are kind of weird but oh so can autism can autism be a strength I think yes and no like some of we have like some create some of us it is like a superpower in a degree like I have a very heightened sense of like smell and hearing and textures and I'm a very emotionally and like compassionate person to the point where like I feel I like feel others pain and suffering I feel others happiness and I cry a lot like in movies or weddings or sad times I've always been like really empathetic I think that's a superpower because some people are completely opposite opposite of that where they're very self-absorbed and they can't see the other person's point of view or they just simply don't care and that kind of makes the world a scary place to be sometimes but of course the parts that we really struggle with like with relationships or um relationships and sensory needs or stimmy or things where we get bullied in our lives no that is that a superpower or a gift not no definitely not anything that really like hinders your existence is not um so yeah like I said every question I can see both points of view on that I need to stop doing these videos when I'm out looking at beautiful sights and I'm distracting people. Like, they want to, like, hear the waves and the water and the wind and I'm like, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> but, you know, the, I think these discussions are important and they help people get a better insight. Um, not many people are listening or watching my videos and that's okay even if like I truly do mean that oh, even if only it helps like a different conversation helps one person and the next conversation different subjects helps the next person like I it makes it worthwhile and I also mentioned that it helps me so I'm gonna keep doing them and I do not care about monetization I don't care about um views or anything like that it's just about reaching who I reach and eventually I hope to get a little better at them though so I can make them shorter and not so lengthy because that does it if people are not watching them for very long because they're just so long then they're clicking off and then it reaches a smaller audience because YouTube is not going to push it to be seen by people if people are clicking off right away so I will try to get better at that because shorter form is better probably for others but for me it's good to just talk and talk <laughs> you know in relationships in my life I've been the person where I was almost like a mute and I just couldn't get my words out and I always had something to say but I was always like being judged about what I said or how I said or was I going to word it the wrong way was was I going to not pronounce something the right way and then with this it's nice to just talk and talk and talk and talk <laughs> to be the person to talk I do like hearing and listening but I also um there's times in my life where I just it was like I was just like the sidekick to the person who was like the star of the show and they're always the one with the funny things to say or they're like always putting on a show because they're like to get attention and whatever but yeah so those are my answers and I'll make sure to include that I got these exact questions from Jubilee Middle Ground and I appreciate them for um creating these videos with these important discussions because it is all the different questions like whether it's about political or LGBTQ or anything it is um sometimes they're really hard to watch like the people who have those really negative opinions on 
pretty much human rights. Like, that's the main thing. It's hard sometimes to get through those, but... Anyway, thank you for watching my video, and until next time.